Hey guys, how you doing? This is Juan with Liberty Graphic Designs. Don't go anywhere. Today we're going to be embroidering a couple of vests, the Sherpa uh, vest, so don't go anywhere. I'm going to embroider three of these, right? Actually, two because I can't find the other one. I don't know what to do with it. Another one. But the customer, these are reversible, and the customer asked me to do this one in the Sherpa side. And if you guys ever embroider anything that's like a towel, a beanie, or in this case, a Sherpa, all this little lint or fuzzy uh, sticks through the actual embroidery and it makes it look really bad. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna show you how to do it so you don't have that problem. The best way to do this type of uh, vest or jackets or whatever you have that is this puffy material, the filling inside of the, of the uh, um, jacket, uh, the feel that they put inside of it is very slippery. So normally we will use this right here, right? We will normally use a hoop like this. Uh, conventional hoop uh, system like this but let me show you what happens if you try to use something like this and as you can see I was already trying I was trying before the video because I didn't want to I didn't want to go through this trouble but let me show you what's gonna happen with this type of fabric or this type of uh, material so normally Again, we will use this conventional hooping system and it's a pain in the neck to actually get it to um, stay in place. So watch what's going to happen. When I try to push it right here, that I'm holding it over here because it's going to come off. So uh, I think it's too tight. Let me loosen it up a little bit. But what's going to happen is because of the, because of the insulation in between the layers is very slippery the hoop will not stay in place and as you can see it's pretty tight so it's in there right the thing is that when we go to take it off sometimes it comes off okay so this one worked um then what we do is we make sure that you push it in see normally this is how you normally leave it, right? So on this one, you wanna make sure that it goes past the uh, not being flush on all four corners. Cause it will come off just like that. So, but because of all the vibration in the machine, this can come off very easy, super easy actually. So what I'm gonna do, we can actually embroider something like this, right? But I don't want to risk it, because see, you see how easy it came off? It already came off. So the best way to embroider this type of jackets is if you have a um, hooping system like this. The bad thing about using something like this is that now you have to reduce the size of the embroidery a lot. See how much bigger it is? I know they sell uh, hooping systems that are bigger than this. This is um, this is a 12 inch, but the inside diameter is only 9.5, and I need a little extra room for the machine. So I, that means that I can only embroider a nine inch. On this one, I can go all the way to 11 inches, making it you know a lot bigger. So this is the best way that you can use to embroider something like this because that will guarantee that your um, jacket, in this case is a vest, the jacket will not come off. Again, the downside of that is that now you cannot embroider something that big. It has to be um, a lot smaller. So now let me show you how to set this one up. Actually, let's set the white one first. Again, I'm supposed to do three, but I can't remember or I can't find the other one. For this one, I'm, I don't have a, I don't have a, a deal for, for this um, magnetic hoop. 
you know, the jig right here, I don't have one. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So on this one, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our backing and I'm using cutaway backing. Two layers of cutaway. Okay, so now when we go to embroider something like this, since we don't have a jig to have everything square, you know, uh, straight, what you can do is you can mark it uh, exactly where you want it. That will be a lot easier. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna mark it. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick the hoop underneath. And I'm gonna place it using, you know, like for example, these lines right here, I'm gonna guide myself. See, like right now I was lucky enough to land it right in the center. Um, and that's basically what I wanna do. I wanna make sure that it is right in the center. Again, I'm just eyeballing it, like the, uh, the distance from here to here, from here to here. Um, it's even because once we, I'm gonna move the backing up a little bit so it lands on top of my hoop. Remember, this is a magnetic hoop. That's why I was, I was saying, make sure that you're um, straight. And again, I'm using these lines right here and my hoop is right there. So see, so I know it's right in the center. Uh, straight, <laughs> uh, this hoop is straight enough. And now we just go ahead and hoop it. That's it. And again, because this one is magnetic, it will stay in place, it will not come off. This vest are actually reversible. Uh, what you see in and this one right here, you actually see in the the right side and this normally will be on the inside. The Sherpa will be on the inside. But again, the customer wanted this to be on the outside. Again, see like on this one, I'm way off. So I'm gonna move it over. I know you cannot see it, but I'm following. It's, it's gonna be kind of hard for you to see it on the video. Let me see, you can probably see that line right there and there's another line over here. I'm using those two lines to make sure that I'm in the center of the vest, making sure that it's nice and straight. Now, this one right here, um, all this fuzzy Sherpa, whatever hairs, whatever you guys call this, this finish, is gonna stick right through our embroidery. So this is where we wanna use um, this right here. This is water soluble uh, material. Normally you wanna use one layer. I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use three layers. I know that's six pieces. And the reason why um, I'm cutting it double is because this piece is not wide enough to cover the uh, the deal. Like it, it looks like it is, right? But I, you know, like I said, that stuff is really cheap. So we can we can use uh, we can use a little more. And I just want to make sure that I'm going to cover the entire area. So when I bring down my hoop. It covers everything. And then now all we do is just lay it down and that's it. That's all we do. So hopefully that, all those layers will cover the entire embroidery and it won't stick out. Okay, so we got the uh, machine on. Now all we gotta do is load these things on the machine. Now with both of them in there, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna trace um, the the um, artwork make sure that it fits and that we're not off so right now what i'm making sure that that the needle is not going to hit it's not going to hit the hoop we run it a second time because uh, i think i was a little too close Okay, so in the back, it looks like it's gonna hit, but the artwork is actually, it's actually curved like that, so we won't hit the corners. So we're good, we're ready to go. All we gotta do now is press start. And this one, the first color is gonna be the different. Uh, and this one I'm gonna use like something like charcoal gray. And this one is gonna be Texas orange. Uh, almost looks like copper. And then the other two colors will be the same. This is a three color job. So 
that one hit so it's actually it was actually too close and it actually hit the back the presser foot hit the back of the of the uh, what do you call it of the hoop and it broke the needle so we're gonna replace the needle and hopefully I can finish this one without ruining the vest. There's the piece of the needle. The other piece is probably underneath or I have no idea where it went. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use another needle. And what I'm using right now, it's uh, if I can get this to focus, I'm using 8012. Yeah, it's not focusing. But these needles that I'm using right now are 8012. Let me grab one. Hopefully, we can get that, you know, to sew in there. This little tool right here, it's really cool. So, we replace our uh, needles just like that. See how easy that was? It's pretty cool. So now I gotta cut this. Okay, so more than likely it's gonna hit again. It's gonna break the needle again. But I'm gonna try, try to run it kind of slow. And you can hear it right now. You'll hear where, it, where it's gonna hit. When it goes up into the highest point, you'll hear it when it hits the back of the hoop. This one over here on this side, you can't see it, but this blue one. So this one right here is actually good. It's a little higher than this one. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. That way you guys can see. Oh, that's all I can get, there you go. That way you'll see where it gets to the center of the W, the presser foot is actually hidden. It's a small lip right there. Um, and it's hitting that lip. So more than likely it's gonna break the needle again. So what I'm gonna do is when it gets to that point, I'm gonna press and hold start. That way the machine goes very slow and I don't break the needle again or break the machine. So right there, I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna press and hold start. That way it goes very slow and you'll hear it. So again, I don't wanna let it go because if I let go of the button, you guys can't see it, but I'm holding uh, start. I don't want it to hit that the back of that hoop again and possibly breaking the machine. So let me see. I'm gonna let it go a little bit and then I'll stop it. So again, now again, I'm pressing uh, start or press and hold start. That way I don't break the machine. And we broke the needle again. Okay. So that, I mean, I'm gonna keep breaking the needle. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna replace the needle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this head off and then let it go down until it passes that little spot right there. Yes, it'll be, it'll be messed up only on that, um, what do you call it, on this vest. But let me show you this other one. See, this other one, I don't have that problem because this, this hoop is actually slightly bigger than the Chinese one. So <laughs> there you go. Don't get this Chinese ones. I, I just got it just to kind of try it out. Um, I, I got this uh, Mighty Hoops. Mighty Hoops, you know, you, you got the little extra room. Just a little bit, but it's enough to make it work. So again, what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go up here, 
turn off the machine. Let me see if you can see it. Or the head. I'm gonna turn off the head and then I'm gonna press start and you won't see the needle coming down because I turned it off, right? And then right there. Now I started going down. It won't hit the hoop again, but it will be a small, um, see here's the other piece of the needle. So get rid of that one, get another needle. And now it won't hit the back of it, but you'll see a gap in there. And I'd rather have a gap than to break the machine or ruin the vest. Okay, so we got the thread back in there and uh, I'm gonna turn this head back on so it'll start or so it'll um, broader. And I'm just to, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna press and hold start so it doesn't like really take off. And there you go, it's not hidden anymore. And right here, I'm gonna stop it because I don't, I don't know if it's gonna hit right there as well. So I'm gonna stop it, press, uh, press and hold start. See, that one doesn't look like it's hidden. So it was only just that, the center of the W. Okay, so the machine now is gonna it's gonna move to embroider the word um, or the bottom line where it says Waco, Texas. And remember how we have problems right there at the very top of the W? That means that more than likely we're gonna have the same problems here, and more than likely it's gonna be at that comma right there, right after Waco. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna again press and hold start so the machine doesn't start too fast, and because we don't want to break it. So here we go. And it's very, very close. So if it happens to hit the bottom of the hoop, I won't be able to recover this right here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, on this one, it just won't say Waco, Texas. So let's see how, let's see how close it is and see if it works. Even though we're very close, it looks like it'll work. Okay, so I stopped the machine because I want to show you something, okay? And the reason why I, I wanna show you this is because I know some people are gonna ask me, and they have asked me in the past, what do I feel uh, about, or how do I feel about these Chinese hoops? Let me show you. You see the distance right there? I mean, my press of foot is right next to the bottom of the, of the hoop. Now let's move over to this um, uh, mighty hoop. You see the distance? See that, it's almost my finger. I mean, I can almost put my finger in there. And if you guys remember when I did the trace, I did it on this hoop. I didn't do it on this green one. So there you go. There's your, if you guys have any questions about the uh, Chinese hoops or Ma I think they're called, what is it, Maggie? Maggie, whatever, hoops. Uh, yeah, don't, don't, yeah, don't put your money on that. Look at that. See the distance? Watch, now over here. Look at that. So I can almost put my entire finger right there and look, and I still got room. And I'm not, I'm not, it's no tricks. You can see it right there. So there you go. So I'm gonna start the machine so you can see how close the press of foot comes to hitting the hoop. Watch. You see that? I mean, that sucker is right there. Now let's look at this one. 
I mean, it already moved, right? But Okay, so the machine is about to finish doing the O. Let me move you in closer. So it's about to finish doing the O, and I think this is where we're gonna have problems with the comma on, uh, you know, it's Waco comma and then Texas. And I'm gonna press and hold start, uh, start so you can see how slow it goes and how close I'm to uh, hitting the, the hoop. When I cut it, I'm gonna stop it. Cause this is where I wanna go very slow. I don't wanna hit the, you see how close it goes? Okay, so even though I'm not hitting the hoop, I'm still gonna let it go very slow. There you go. So that was the lowest point on this embroidery. So now I can let it go because I know it's not gonna hit because it didn't hit the other one. So the word Texas shouldn't hit the, the, the uh, hoop. But you see how close I am? Now watch this one. See this one? See that gap that's right there? I mean, it's a big old gap. Um, so there you go. If you guys have any questions on these Maggie hoops, yeah, I'll say stay away from them. Stay away from these hoops. You don't say, you really don't save any money. This, this mighty hoops, this, this big one right here is 150 bucks. And this one is about 135. But then by the time you pay shipping and all that crap, uh, you should stay with mighty hoops. Okay, so now the machine is switching colors. We shouldn't have any more problems as to, you know, whether it's gonna hit, whether it's gonna hit the hoop or not. It, it's just switching colors. It's just gonna do the inside. Uh, like for example this line right here and it's gonna do a shield and then a small line that'll be it There you have it. It's uh, it's done Let me take it off. Let me move the camera so you guys can see it better. So it's all done The only difference on the two is that again that one I used uh, kind of like a copper um, Color and this one I'm using a dark gray, uh, not charcoal, but very close to charcoal gray. Uh, the second colors are the same, which is gold and uh, red. So this one right here, it's very easy. We just take it off, move the hoops out of the way. And since I used uh, cut away, I'm sorry, uh, tear away backing, we can just, you know, just rip it apart or away or whichever way you want to call it. Normally we will clean just everything in here, right? So the customer is not, you know, walking down the street and this stuff is coming up. So, but that's what it looks like. Looks really good. I think it looks really good. And then not this one right here. We will take this off. Same deal. We're gonna take the backing off. And like I said, this, this vest are uh, reversible, as you can see right there. They're reversible, but um, by me going through the both um, sides, you know, front and back, now the customer, I don't think they're gonna be wearing this um, as, as a reversible. They're only gonna be showing this side right here. So this one, just take it off, just like uh, just like I did on the other one, on the tearaway. Just like that, nothing to it. I mean, it just looks just like a plastic bag. And no, you cannot use a plastic bag you have to use this this is called water soluble backing and because on this one i use like six layers i have to peel both uh i'm gonna take most of it off and 
you will see in a little bit how we get rid of the those more pieces that stay behind but anyways the reason why we use that soluble uh, backing is so the uh, the lint or fuzzy uh, in this case sherpa doesn't come through the embroidery because if you don't use that you'll see uh, um, fibers coming through the embroidery and it looks really bad but on this one you know because we use that you don't see it and so now to get rid of it we're just going to use water this is actually soapy water with uh, alcohol you can use regular water again uh, I'm just doing this for the video. I won't having too much of this stuff in here. It's not um, it's not cool. You wanna you wanna take most of it off because otherwise you're gonna be sitting here um, cleaning it with water, and it's, that's just too much. Okay, so we get uh, water, and then you just you know get it wet, and you'll see how that stuff. Actually, I can spray it right on there, right? And you'll see how that stuff it'll start dissolving. Uh, the water start um, dissolving it and that's the way you get it off and this one is going to take a little longer because I put a lot I mean you can see how it's actually sticking because now it's actually dissolving see now remember earlier I couldn't even grab it in this case it's almost exaggerated uh, the amount that I put in there it was a lot you didn't I didn't need it to put that much in it but because of the Sherpa um, that's why I put six layers in there. And I know some of you are gonna ask, wouldn't it be easier to wash it? Yes. Yes, it would. But anyways, even with uh, me using the uh, water soluble, you can see that the Sherpa is so thick. Look at that. That it's actually covering the logo and the letters are gonna be completely covered once I remove all this um, backing backing topping whatever you want to call it I know it looks like a mess but trust me it's not that bad if you only use one layer but you see how easy it comes up it's, it's actually hard to grab it because it's so tight if you ask me I really don't like that finish because it kind of defeats the purpose we can't see the you can't see the logo you know so, I mean, like on this white one, and this white one looks really nice. Real, real nice. But remember where the machine was hidden? It was just a little bit right there, so we can't even see it. That's why I didn't even bother fixing it. But see that? It's just a little bit. So if you ever have to do anything like towels that have a lot of fuss like this one, this is uh, how you want to do it. You use this water soluble uh, topping and that, you know, you can do stuff like that. So there you go guys, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the process. Cause this one right here, trust me, I honestly don't like it because the, the Sherpa is really thick. So you can't really see the actual work or the actual logo as you can on this Y1. Um, but like if you ever if you ever uh, have to embroider towels or some baby blankets that's the way to do it use some soluble backing so let me know in the comments below guys if you have any questions or if you have any any comments you know if you like the process again let me know in the comments below thank you for watching it was a pleasure like always let me know if you want me to make a special video that you guys want me to that you guys want to see how we do a certain thing uh, whether it be screen printing, embroidery, sublimation, what else? I think that's it. But yeah, thank you guys, and I will catch you on the next one. <laughs> bye bye now. God bless you. Adios. See you later. See you later. Bye bye.